In the last video, I fixed my death wobble. But I need to do a front end alignment so the tires are going in the same direction. I could take this to an alignment shop, but I know that even after I make an appointment, I'm gonna have to drive there. I'm gonna have to wait in this waiting area until they call my name or they bring the car into the shop and get it done. And that's just a lot of time just waiting. Now, they only cost about 80 bucks in my area. They even have packages where you can get lifetime front end alignment. What I'm trying to do is a little bit more simple because front end alignments can get pretty complicated if you're looking at camber, caster, or toe alignment. So mine is gonna be pretty basic. I'm just gonna be doing a toe alignment. So I'm doing it at home. Before getting into the alignment parts, I'll go over some of the components that make up your suspension on the front end of the vehicle. The front end of vehicles usually consists of control arms, track bars, ball joints, tie rods, tie rod ends, drag link, drag link ends, bushings of all sorts, and more. Obviously, there are a lot of components to consider and don't be dismayed, I'm not gonna explain what each component is. Now, how vehicles get out of alignment could be a whole host of reasons too. It could be simply lifting your vehicle, or it could be component parts are wearing out, or you could hit a pothole while you're driving and throw everything out of whack. So it really depends on what you did or what happened for it to get out of alignment. I'll explain the camber and the caster briefly as we're actually focusing on the toe alignment in this video. So camber affects whether the top of the tire leans in or leans out from the vehicle. This is usually called positive or negative camber like what's shown in the illustration. This may require adjustable components or new components if modifying from factory specs. Now, caster is the pivot angle relative to the center point of the wheel. And depending if it's in front of the center of the wheel or behind the center of the wheel, it's gonna be called positive or negative caster. You may need adjustable components there too if modifying from factory specs. A toe alignment is pretty much where the front tires need to be parallel to each other. So the idea is if your steering wheel is straight and your front tires are straight, then the intended thrust line is where your vehicle travels forward in a straight line smoothly and the front tires are going in that direction. My Jeep is out of alignment basically because I lifted it with two inch steel spacers in the front and the back. And usually if there's gonna be any components that are failing or wearing out, it'll be more pronounced when you lift the vehicle because the angles of everything are out of factory spec. And so those failing components will make themselves known, which is what happened and that's why I had to replace those components I mentioned. Other than the two inch spacers to lift the Jeep and the JK takeoff wheels and slightly bigger tires than what came on the Jeep from the factory, everything else is stock. So because of that, I don't have the adjustable components necessary to affect the camber and the caster of the front wheels. I can only do the toe alignment. Because we're focusing more on the toe alignment, a general rule of thumb is this. For rear wheel drive vehicles, and that's to include my Jeep, which is a 4x4, but the main drive wheels are the rear wheels. 
front tires should have a slight toe in. And the idea is, this is a little exaggerated, so the front tires are pointed like this, okay? That's being towed in. Because the rear wheels are pushing the vehicle from behind, that slight toe in will straighten out as you drive forward. For front wheel drive vehicles, because the, the drive wheels are in the front, it's pulling forward the vehicle. Front tires are gonna tow out. This obviously is exaggerated. As it pulls it forward, it pulls in the front of the tires. To make it simple for my Jeep, the measurement between the front of the two tires in the front, and then the measurement between the two tires in the back of the front tires need to be as close as possible. But because it's toe in, the measurement between the front tires in the front has got to be about a sixteenth of an inch shorter than the measurement between the tires in the back of the front tires. And I'll show you that. These are alignment plates that I borrowed from my son-in-law, Stefano, who owns a shop, specializes in Jeeps and trucks, lifting them and modifying them and all kinds of cool stuff. So you can see that I've got them bolted up to the wheel hubs. The plates don't bend, and basically they're long pieces of angle iron with the holes so you can fit it onto the studs of your wheels. And then there's slots on either side to put tape measures. Now, if you don't have this angle iron, you could use any piece of you know, steel or like these cast off aluminum legs that came off of a canopy tent. So anything really that's straight, that's not gonna bend, it, you can use on the front wheels. And then what you do is you have to put a tape measure in the slot on one of those alignment plates. And then you run the tape underneath the vehicle to the other side and hook it in to the other slot on the alignment plate. So you have to measure that in the front of the front tires as well as in the rear of the front tires. The measurement between the rear of the front tires was 69 and three quarters inches. The distance between the front of the front tires was 68 and a quarter inches, making it an inch and a half different. To make that adjustment, I first loosen the steering stabilizer, and it's because we're gonna be moving around the uh, tie rod tube, and the steering stabilizer is connected to the tie rod tube. You can't rotate the tie rod tube with that steering stabilizer still fastened to it. Once I do that, I loosen the nuts on the tie rod end clamps, and that holds the tie rod ends to the tie rod tube. So once I get that loosened, I'll use a pipe wrench or channel locks or some kind of pliers to either move that tube clockwise, if you're looking at it from the side, or counterclockwise, depending on how to move the front of the front tires. And then you'll have to double check the tape measures each time you make that adjustment so you don't go overboard. So once you get that difference of a 16th of an inch front and back, then you're set. That's it, take it for a test drive. The test drive did go great. Before, the steering wheel was, you know, having to be constantly adjusted left and right to keep the thing straight. Now, she's steady and she's straight. Um, I'll keep my eye on the tires to make sure there's, there's not any uneven wear, and there shouldn't be. And if I really needed to, I could take it to an alignment shop, have them double check my work and make sure it's all good to go, which is not a bad idea if you're not comfortable doing this type of work. So if you're interested in any of the tools or products that I've used in this video, I'll put the links in the description box below. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so I do earn a small commission. If you use any of those Amazon links, 
to purchase tools or products. I will throw in other links uh, that are non-Amazon and I'm not affiliated with any of those suppliers. So buy to your heart's content. Upcoming videos will cover installing the front drive shaft. So I get my four wheel drive back, which is why I bought this daggum thing in the first place to go take it off road. I'm servicing the front rear axles. I'll have to do that on the Jeep as well as servicing the transfer case and make sure everything works and moves like butter. The goal is that she's off road ready by the summer. And hopefully I can give you some videos of that going off road. Not that there's none on YouTube, but you haven't seen mine. If you like this content, you know, please like it, subscribe, put your comments in the comments box. You know, there's a lot of content coming up. So more than just my Jeep videos, you know, I've got a 2006 Chevy Silverado with a 5.3. I picked it up. It's new to me with 191,000 miles on it. So there's some maintenance and modifications and upgrades and repairs that need to be done, but she's a running and driving vehicle. We also picked up a 2011 Lexus RX 350 for my wife. That's got a lot of miles on it too, 173,000 miles on it, uh, but it's in pretty good shape. But maintenance, repairs, all that kind of stuff is gonna go along with it. I also have my son's 2005 Toyota Corolla that's currently having starting, or not starting, but running issues. And there's a lot of cosmetic work that needs to be done on that. So that's coming up. And aside from those, I've got home remodeling stuff, building closets, whatever, you know. So I am a DIYer at heart. This is not what I do as a living. As a living, I'm in sales. I've been in the transportation industry for years. So if you know DOT compliance and things like that, I'm your guy. And if you want to follow me on other social media, I'm on but Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, even Twitter, X. It's all Tool Tom John. So you can DM me on any of those other platforms or just simply put a comment on this video. So I do appreciate it. Until next time, see ya.